<laughs> Ready? Guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make some of the best carne asada steak, marinate from scratch, flank steak, grill it up, carne asada fries. We have our amazing flank steak here. I've already kind of trimmed it up. All you have to do is just, if you have a little bit more of these like strands of fat right here, you can just take that silver skin off, super easy. I want it to be nice and even, so I've just kind of pounded it down with my hand a little bit to make sure it's pretty even all the way across. Gonna throw that in our bowl over here and then work up our marinade really fast. So I've got my bowl, we're gonna do some limes. And then this is one of my key ingredients right here. This is just orange juice concentrate. You can just pick up in the freezer section. Now I like to keep some of it laying around. And what I do is I just throw it in a container like this or a Tupperware container and I leave it in the freezer. And when I'm doing stuff like making carne asada or, or things where I want like orange juice, but I don't have it like oranges on hand or like it's kind of impromptu, it's really nice. You can just open it up and throw some in and it works really well. It's super concentrated. I'm using a serrano pepper. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this open I'm gonna give it a rough chop, throw it in my marinade. Apple cider vinegar, about half a cup. We're gonna take two green onions, throw it into my marinade. It's gonna turn out to be half a cup or so. Cilantro, same deal, rough chop, throw that in. And about a tablespoon of my Mexican rub. There we go. Check out the link in the description below for all of the ingredients for the exact recipe, how to make the marinade, how to make the carne asada, and how to make these awesome fries. So I'm just gonna throw that in there. We're just gonna marinate it for about an hour while we make our other ingredients. So I'm gonna let it sit in this bowl, but it's best to let it go overnight. While the steak is marinating, we're gonna work on the guacamole. I have four avocados here. They're definitely ripe. I like to just cut them all the way around like this, open them up take that out. What you wanna do is save one of the seeds for later. And I'll tell you why in a second. So my trick is I like to take a whisk and smash down all the avocado with a whisk. I find it very easy to make it nice and smooth and creamy. Okay, now that that's mixed, I'm gonna take a jalapeno. This is my favorite way to cut a jalapeno right here if you don't want the seeds. Take the end off and then set it upright and cut down the side. When you do that, you can see where the pith is and you don't have to cut into it. And you kind of walk away with like, ah, I don't need that. There are the seeds. And now it's super easy to just kind of julienne slice it. Getting this really awesome fine mince brunoise. You want about two tablespoons of chopped cilantro when you're done. Now another trick, uh, I'm gonna add three limes. I like to roll my limes a little bit first. Kind of break up the pulp. Add some fresh cracked black pepper. And salt. Now uh, avocados are not naturally seasoned and they are a lot of fat a lot of flavor and things that help go really well with fat are acid and obviously salt. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is onion. So we're just mixing it all up. I like it smooth. I want little chunks in it, but I like a smoother mouth feel. Let's get a little taste. That's good, yes, it's on point. You have to adjust it. it needs a little bit more salt. Everything's gonna be different. Um, your avocados are gonna be a different level of ripeness than mine. Everything's situational. So just make sure you taste as you're going. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the seeds and we're gonna put them back in it. And that's gonna help keep it fresh. 
And then just, I like to come back with, you can use parchment paper, clear wrap is perfect. But just take something, push it down right onto the top. We're gonna come back in a couple minutes, so this is gonna work just fine. But if you're doing it at home, uh, clear wrap it. Make sure you push all the air out, keep the seeds in. That's gonna help it from oxidizing and turning brown. Should last for at least a day like that. You might get a little darkening on top, but you can either fold it in or just kind of scoop the top off if you want to, if you don't like it. Now we're gonna make a super simple pico de gallo. Um, tomatoes, onions, jalapeno, cilantro, lime juice, montage. Same deal guys, taste when you're done, add a little bit at a time when it comes to salt and pepper, and then you can add more. Same thing with the lime. That's our pico de gallo. We're gonna set that aside. Let's throw the steak on. We're rolling with the SG today, guys. It's one of my favorite grills. SG stands for sliding grill, and we have that sliding grill open. She's rocking at 400 degrees. I have the steak on there. I'm waiting for it to be able to flip. I'm gonna throw the fries in and get those cooking while that steak is cooking. Let's go. I've got our fries all cut up, guys. I love them with the skin on. I have a fry cutter, so I cut them here. If you don't have time, just buy a bag of frozen fries, throw them in the oven, crisp them up, build your carne asada fries on top. You know, go to McDonald's, go to Five Guys, get some Cajun fries, bring those home, lay them out on the sheet tray, build them that way. I'm gonna make them from scratch. We're gonna blanch them first. So I have my oil at 300 degrees. We're gonna throw the fries in and take them for about five to six minutes. And then we'll take them back out, let them cool, crank it back up to 350, 375, throw them in again and crisp them up. This is what I want my fries looking like when I first take them out after I blanch them. So cooking them low, 300 degrees, you want them to start getting like this rough blister around the outside. We're gonna take them out, let them sit, and then afterwards, we'll crank the oil, get it all the way up, fry all these to crispy goodness. There are so many condiments and other accoutrements to this dish that I feel like regular cheddar cheese is just fine. As long as you get a really good cheddar cheese, like a, a local, fresh, nice cheddar, that's medium. Don't get the regular like light cheddar. You don't have to go for the sharp, but a nice medium cheddar cheese. And then always get a block when you want it to count, always get a block and shred it. It's gonna have so much more flavor. When you buy the bag cheddar cheese, they have things like cornstarch or different preservatives on it so it lasts longer and it doesn't clump or stick together. If you get a block cheddar and grate it, it's always gonna outdo the bag cheddar. Our oil is back up to 375. I'm gonna throw these in and do the final fry on them to get them nice and crispy. You want them really crispy because essentially we're making nachos out of them. You don't want them to be soft. And if you cook them all the way through the first time, they just lose so much flavor and, and crispness. Guys, if you didn't know, we just came out with a brand new butcher paper. It is absolutely awesome and gorgeous. Look at that. Throw that down on our sheet tray. There we go. So to build our carne asada fries. We're gonna start out with a giant heap of fries on each sheet tray. We're gonna do cheese directly on top. Okay, we're gonna throw these in the grill to melt them. Guys, we're based out of northern Utah, and one thing Utah is not short of in any aspect is really tasty, amazing Mexican food. And the carne asada is so perfect. You can save this, you can make carne asada burritos, tacos, anything you want. Do it with your eggs in the morning, 
or even make a giant plate of this and, and have leftovers and make carne asada fried burritos? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay, check this out. So now you take this, like a so. First thing I wanna do, take my carne asada and just pile it. Do not be afraid. Pile it up. Take your pico. Pico it up. Guacamole. Pile it. California, Utah style. I like to hit the top with some cotija cheese crumbles, just like this. That's it. A little bit of steak, some potato, cheese, look at that. And some guacamole on there. This is my favorite snack food. Mm. Mm. Oh man. Dude, it's so good. Crispy fries, that melty fresh cheese, you gotta grate it fresh. The sour cream, the cotija, the saltiness of everything coming together. Dude, that steak is on point. Look at that. It's so good. Get some of that sour cream. I would put hot sauce on it. I think I would like be pouring hot sauce. Mmm. Oh, so good. Mm-hmm.